All right, what's going on, everybody? Who we got on the live stream today? I see Cannon, Andre, Eli, Chison. What's going on? Blitz, what's up, Blitz? I like seeing familiar faces. Drop a like on this video if you haven't already, and then we'll get right into the content. All right, very cool. What's up, everybody? Oh, look, my chat thing is actually working. Let me move this. It's actually pretty cool. Um, we got Magic. Wow, super chat already. Man, I feel like you donate 10 bucks every single time we're live. Thanks, man. It's very much appreciated. It's awesome. Uh, got Chison, Andre, Cannon, a lot of familiar faces. Thank you guys for tuning in. Um, I asked you guys what day would be a good day to live stream. You guys said Tuesday. Um, Loki was going to bail um, on this live stream, but I know that you guys said Tuesday, so I wanted to stick with the plans. Um, I actually just got back from Target. I had to pick up some stuff, grab some dinner for my family, um, but now we're back. I went diving this morning, um, caught some fish. Not exactly all the ones that I was targeting, but I did get a lot of action with the Evolve Pole Spear. You guys can see it right here um, in the background. Um, but yeah, it's it was, um, pretty neat. Was able to catch some fried fish to finish off the episode. So stay tuned for that. Maybe maybe next week, Tuesday, um, I'll be able to publish it. I've got a fishing episode coming out tomorrow. It's a pretty long one. It's a very in-depth uh, video of me cleaning out my tackle box. But yeah, what's going on, Andre? Um, thanks, Mad Jack. Man, I appreciate all of it. Um, thank you, guys. Canon Mad Jack is your sponsor. Pretty much, man. He sponsors these live streams. Um, and trust me, I, um, me and him don't have this stuff planned. Every time I come on here, I just feel like he donates money. So thanks a lot, man. It's, it's very much appreciated. Um, what's it? Manini's? No, not yet. Spinning, spinning Rock? Not Manini's. Very similar, though. Uh, I still got to clean them. They're in my Pelican cooler. And yeah, I was this close to shooting a bunch of maninis today, but they weren't as big as the other fish that I did target. Uh, my friend actually caught, he didn't, he didn't catch one, but he found an Apple Watch and he sent me a picture of it charging when he got home. So he's, he's pretty stoked. Um, but yeah, so this episode is going to be a little bit different. I'm actually going to be talking about spearfishing tips as if I was going to do another video. Um, so what's going to happen is I'm just going to talk about this. Um, I'm going to talk about the spearfishing tips that I wanted to based on my experience today diving. And then I'm going to record that then publish that as a separate video on top of the live stream. Okay, let's let's catch up on some of these comments first and then we'll go into uh, what my original plan was. So, yeah. Let me try to turn on this light. Yeah, Apple Watch tracking him now. <laughs> Did you see Ryan's new video yet? No, I haven't, but I, I know it's about an allure. Um, I've seen like the first 20 seconds of it. You know how YouTube does that preview thing, but I haven't got a chance to sit down and watch it. Usually when I like when I watch um, fishing and diving content, I like to actually like lay down and enjoy it. I don't like to skim through it because then I forget to finish it later on. So, yeah. And yes, I did dive North Shore today, um, UHI asked. Today was really the only flat day out of out of like the next two weeks, I think. Or last week and this week, today was the only flat day, so I just had to go with it. Um, west of Hanama Bay, 1,000, what is that? I don't know what kind of currency that is. But thank you, Toe Cutter. <laughs> Very cool. Somebody um convert convert that. I wanna say ten dollars. One dollar. 
That's awesome. Never got yen donated to me. That's sick. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> Very cool. Um, but yeah, you guys want to want to pop up pop up some some more questions before I get into what I'm going to talk about. This is going to be my first time, so I'm going to be skimming through it. So what I'm going to do is record part of this and then edit it and then actually publish this as a video. So you guys will see me doing a video live, I guess. Um, I don't have any notes in front of me because this was kind of last minute, but um, yeah, close to $10. Thanks, man. Spinning Rock says, yes, Justin, I have a question. Brian says nine bucks. That's awesome. Thank you, Toe Cutter. Um, so what's your question, Spinning Rock? What's up, Zesty? What's going on? <clears throat> Justin, when you shoot with your gun, you close one eye. Um, I don't. I don't think I know anybody that does. So if you do that in the comments, um, comment it. But I, um, I'd say shooting a spear gun is like a bow and arrow or like throwing a baseball. I mean, I'm a baseball player, so that's kind of the best example I can give um, because you're you're kind of aiming to where the fish is going to be, if that makes sense. Um, but yeah, I may, I may have tried it once or twice, but no, I don't. Uh, I just, I've just, um, with the amount of times I've been diving and stuff, I have a good feel of, of my shot. But um, try it out, I guess, and see if it's if it works for you. Especially if you're honing in on one specific fish. I like to look around um, before I go down, which actually I can talk about with the within the spearfishing tips section of this video. But yeah. So we got Chison says I do sometimes. Uh, do you ever dive bomb on prize fish? Um, yeah, I do. Yo, Justin, I bought a seven foot three pound for me last night. I'm the one that ordered it at AM. Awesome. Shooting guns, both eyes open, you gain depth perception and visual perception. See, that's a really good point. Um, depth perception and visual perception. Um, I don't know if that's the actual word, proprioception. But um, I don't think you can achieve that with one eye closed. You know what I mean? Um, I, th I think it works better for your brain if both your eyes are open. And it's, I feel like it's just going to make you a better diver as a whole because... You lose half of your peripheral vision when you have one eye closed, meaning that you won't be able to see maybe other fish that you can target. For me, if I'm taking a drop on a school, I want to see what's in the school first. What I don't want to do is, um, is just aim at one fish. I want to kind of see what, what's in the school, what's in the pile, and then I'll take my drop. And then the second drop, I'll kind of have an idea of what fish I want to target. But I'm going to be open to other fish as well because when you're diving in the ocean, predators can swim up out of nowhere. You can be aiming for a big munu. And then you'll have a moo just in your peripheral on the side. Like my biggest moo that I ever shot um, was actually, I think, seven or eight pounds. And what had happened was um, I was diving next to these big poppers on the side of me. Um, I would say the actual name of the reef structure, but I don't want to get flagged. But I was diving next in the middle of this big reef structure, and I was aiming for this school of uhus. The biggest one in the school is probably like three or four pounds, um, and that's the one I was going to target. So I took a drop. I was sitting at the bottom for a while, and just in the top left of my peripheral was a moo that just swam right in front, a dozer moo. And um, yeah, that's how I landed my biggest moo. Um, but yeah, I've been landing shots, but it's hard if it's a quick fish like parrot fish. Um, yeah, see parrot fish, you can't get discouraged with them because they do rip pretty easily. So, um, I'd say better shot placement. Usually at parrot fish, um, I was going to save this for a uh, uhu hunting tips video, but usually with parrot fish. I'm either aiming for the top of the fish or I'm aiming for the back. If you aim for the middle of the fish, most likely you're going to hit the gut bag. And that's pretty much an automatic rip every time unless you get lucky. Um, but if you aim for the tail area, it has the most meat. That's where all the power comes from, which means that it's not going to rip off as much because that's the meat 
in the tail and all that muscle is going to hold the shaft as it's swimming away. Um, have you ever shot an Alua? Yes, a uh, big Omilu. Um, how's it? We ordered a spear last night. Oh, I have your order. Um, I just ran out of my, my shipping, uh, the, the bubble mailer that I shipped the spears in. So I just picked some up at Target. So, um, yeah, yours will be shipped out tomorrow and so will yours blitz. I either aim through instinctive or look straight down the gun once I start second guessing myself. And that's a really good tip. If you are already shooting with one eye, one eye closed, then maybe experiment with both eyes open. But the one thing you don't want to do is second guess yourself. You'll have a poor shot, poor shot placement. The fish is going to rip and die somewhere. So, yeah. Andre said, where I dive, you're not allowed to kill parrotfish slash uhu. Um, that's fully understandable. I've gotten a ton of comments on my videos talking about how parrotfish are um, important to the reef. And I believe all of those things, you know, but I'm going to let the the um, conservationists in Hawaii do their job. Um, they've already they've already restricted harvesting blue uhus on Maui. It hasn't hit the rest of these islands. So as long as I'm diving within the law and as long as I'm able to catch the fish that I want to catch. Um, then it should be good. The one thing you don't want to, the one thing you want to watch out for is the guys that are long lining, um, catching dozens and dozens of parrotfish at a time. That those are the guys that are truly um, damaging the reefs and the reef structures. But I I totally understand it. Um, what else is in here? What's up, Hanapa Action, UHI? On your hatch gun, why did you go with enclosed track and not open track? Um, the first hatch gun that I own was an enclosed track. I just loved it a lot. So, um, yeah, I just stuck with the enclosed track. I've tried open track wood guns. Um, not a fan, but the ones that I did try, I don't think were that great. So, um, yeah, I'm open to another open track wood gun in the future. Just not right now because I, I've already got two guns that are two um, very good productive sizes. So... Uh, maybe in the future. Justin, how's the Alua house I found? Man, that thing was sick. That video was great too. The Uhu's there swim right up to your gun. <laughs> <coughs> I do not feel bad about targeting parrotfish. They're so darn hard to catch, so I'm not worried. See, that's another good point too. It's very challenging to catch Uhu in the first place. Unless you're diving like a very, very secluded spot on another island or even certain parts of this island. Um, if you know, you know. But um, <laughs> yeah, they are very hard to catch. So don't feel too bad about shooting them because it is legal. Um, how's it? I support your channel. It has good videos. Thank you. Because so much people target them. That's why. So hard to shoot them. Um, today... Avalons are high quality open track wood guns. I'll look into that. I'm gonna screenshot that. This is gonna be my first of probably a half a dozen screenshots, just like we did in the last live stream. I see like 30 pound uhu sometimes. Man, I couldn't even imagine. I don't think those would be that great tasting though. Like, what is the average size of those those parrot fish? Because I've seen some pretty big ones, like in like in Australia and stuff. But um yeah that's crazy. Thailand. Okay, so it's in Thailand. You know my um I had a I have an aunt that lives in Thailand. But um yeah, I don't know if they do any like charter spear fishing, you know. They might give me a discount cuz I'm brown. discount for being brown <laughs> yeah i saw some big parrot fish today i chased them because my breath hold is only about eight seconds so i can't ambush them um it'll get better over time that's why like once you catch a parrot fish i think as a diver that's kind of a graduation to another level of 
you know what I mean? It's a it's a really big accomplishment, I'd say, as a, as a Spiro here in Hawaii. When I caught my first uhu, um, I was diligently going all the time. And once I accomplished that, like, it was just really rewarding. And I just felt like I could catch more, you know what I mean? Like, until you shoot that very first one, then you're always going to doubt your, doubt your ability and doubt yourself. Um, Canon says, yeah, Justin, when you come here, I show you the house. Get your first Olua or Milu get a lot over there. Yeah. Um, so my friend that I went diving with, his um, the rest of his family lives in Kauai. They got a boat. Um, but yeah, me and him are planning a trip. Once all of this quarantine stuff is done, probably for like oh, pro probably for like a weekend. So I'll let you know. I'll keep you posted. Um, and yeah, can't wait to graduate so I can eat my diploma. <laughs> are you going to go tomorrow? Oh, okay. So these guys are having a little side conversation. My new rule is only shoot one uhu a year. I shot one ten pounder last year, waiting for a thirteen pounder to take this year. I've only shot one ten pounder in my life. Um, it was a pretty big fish, for sure. Uh, but yeah, I haven't I haven't been shooting much big big uhus lately. Can you get Can you make a giveaway on a charter to Hawaii after the COVID nineteen? Um, not sure what that means. I try to pass on uhus. Ryan says, "Yeah, I mean whatever whatever you choose to eat. You know that's the one thing about spearfishing is you can get so." locked in on on specific fish um and you can just dedicate your dive on on shooting these this amount of fish and it's just you know you can ask like today i went diving and yesterday i asked my mom my grandma what kind of fish they might want to eat because i knew i was bringing out the three prong and i was going to blast some fish they usually like mempachi manini that sort of stuff although i didn't shoot either today but i did catch some fried fish grinds for them but um, yeah, that's, that's the thing with spear fishing is you can get really specific on the fish you want to target, the fish you want to eat and the fish you want to bring home and give to other people. Canon Canon says, I only shoot uhus when people ask for them. Yeah. Spinning rock says, leave all the uhus to me, bros. Um, scuba bear. What's one fish that you will never pass on because it's so rare. Um, the one fish that I would that I would never pass on as of right now. Hold on, let me think about it first. <clears throat> um like right now, right now, probably probably a spectacled uhu, like a ten pounder. Uh, I've never shot one. I've never shot a spectacled blue. I just think they're the nicest fish that we have here in Hawaii. Um and I just really want to get one printed because they're so nice. I just want to be able to Put it on my wall, my background somewhere. I've always, I've always wanted to shoot a spectacled blue. <clears throat> Justin, do you make fish prints using ink if you catch something big? If so, please make a how-to video. Um, I've, I've never done fish prints myself. I've got a couple friends that make, make fish prints, but um, I'm thinking of. The next fish that I catch that I want to get printed, I want to reach out to probably Desmond Thane, uh, get one printed from him and maybe do like a collaboration video where I can promote some of his products as well as he can kind of show us his process without giving up his, you know, methods. You know what I mean? So what are, what are your guys' fish that, that you would, you wouldn't pass up? James says Mu and Uku. Canon says Uku. What's your favorite fish to eat? Um, I like I like Kumus. Kumu is probably my favorite fish to eat. <clears throat> Kumu or what's another good fish I like to eat? Yeah, probably probably Kumu and and like papil, like papil, like five, five to eight palm papils, great meat on that, Roy. 
Um, let's see, Fish and Dive Hawaii. We did we did a workshop with Desmond. Oh, dude, that's sick. That's awesome. And Pachi. Um, Link. Okay, so you ever dived in Molokai? No. <clears throat> Hilu is the best fish. <laughs> um, so yeah, let's let's get into the other part of the the video. So um, we'll just see how it goes, and then yeah. So I'm gonna start recording my screen, and then we'll just talk about about my dive. So I'm gonna go ahead and hide the chat. So just stay with me, guys. <clears throat> <coughs> Choking on my jack in the box I just got. <laughs> so today I went diving with my buddy Jerome. Um, me and him have been trying to plan a dive for a while. And um, yeah, we finally linked up. The waves have been up here in the winter here in Hawaii. But uh, springtime, there's usually always some waves. But you'll be able to find a couple flat days. Yesterday was pretty flat, two to three feet, although it was pretty choppy. There's a lot of wind. So today it was only two feet, but it was still pretty windy, so we decided to go early. Usually, if you can hit the water before 7, 8 a.m., you'll have like two or three hours, maybe like two hours max of, of some pretty calm winds, and then you'll be coming in once the wind starts picking up, which is exactly what happened today. But um, the one thing about diving, especially during this... Uh, this pandemic and stuff is that uh, all of our stuff has kind of been everywhere we haven't been diving in a while for me it's been two months for him it's been a month and a half uh, so we didn't have the the best gear uh, equipment you know what I mean so for me I've been growing out my hair so I wasn't able to adjust my mask my goggles my GoPro getting the hood on and stuff so I kept fidgeting with it throughout the whole dive which means that I'm spending less time actually trying to target fish and trying to shoot fish. I was just uncomfortable, you know. And for him, about an hour and a half into the dive, he wore the wrong mask. He was experimenting with the new, the low volume mask. And it kept pressing it up against his, his forehead right here. So it was giving him a fat headache. We both ended up swimming in. Um, we didn't shoot anything with our spear guns, but I did catch some fish with a three prong. But I guess... The, the thought I had at the end of the dive is that if you're not comfortable while you're spearfishing because of a mistake that could have been avoided, just prepping your gear and getting all the stuff ready, um, you're not going to be as effective when you're in the water, especially in times like this or if you live in an area where you're not going to have two, three, four, five days in a row to go spearfishing and you may just have one day out of a month then you got to make that two, three hour dive count. Um, and then you have all that time before that dive to prepare, which is kind of what we didn't do today. But it was good because we learned, for, learned from some mistakes. Um, he He's going to bring the mask that actually fits him next time. And I'm actually going to adjust my mask and snorkel, my GoPro mount, and all that stuff to how long my hair is right now. <clears throat> to how long my hair is right now. So um, definitely... Something that you guys should consider when you guys are going diving. Make sure all of your gear is right, all of your gear is ready, and it's good to go. So, um, yeah, those are some spearfishing tips that I wanted to share based on my own experience today um, that kind of affected our dive. Not in a major way, but in, a, in as much a disrupting way as we weren't that effective um, actually spearfishing. All right, so let's hop back in the chat, and then I'll jump back and do some more spearfishing tips. Um, Palani, Manpachi, and Aha are my favorite. Aha is the one with the blue meat, yeah? Nah, yellow tanks. Um, just shot a lure today. My first one shot it between the eyes with my Conaloa 110, and the thing snapped my shaft in half. <laughs> Where's the best place to place shots on them? Um, well, if you're doing it in between the eyes, you should should have probably stoned it, depending on where your shot 
ended up, but um, that's more of a unicorn shot, which is guaranteed to bend your shaft. But um, yeah, it's it's hard with the lures. You just have to accept the fact that you're, if you're going to shoot a big fish like that, um, they're going to break gear. You know, I was just on the phone with um, my friends at Evolve Diving and we were talking about the different three prongs and stuff. And one of their higher end three prongs, the CT, he's only known of about a few. He's only, he's only known of about um, five or six of them breaking. And it, and it was all with like 80 to 100 pound of lure, which is normal. It, 80 to 100 pound of lure is going to break any type of gear. So. Um, definitely keep that in mind when you decide to shoot fish like that, that um, your gear is definitely going to be um, the least of your concerns. When is killer all week? Yeah, man. My son actually got a kite for Easter, so <laughs> me and him are going to be flying it just because of how windy i see it, seen it today. Do you guys, you guys ever go diving? Um, and when you jump in, it looks nice. And when you come in, you're like, wow, it's just diving in that today. It was pretty flat. It was pretty clean. We could see the, the rip current from the shore, which is normal from the spot that we were diving. But when we came back in, you just turn around and you're like, wow, this looks undivable. But yet we just swam in and we were just diving on the outside of reef like 20 minutes ago. Um... Do people fish for squid in Hawaii? Um, people fish for a taco. My brother tries to fish for squid. I spear him. Um, yeah. What is people's biggest pet peeves in the water? Mine's is muzzle awareness. Not sure what you mean by that. Have you ever used a mask with a GoPro mount already attached? No, I've seen them. I've seen them. Um everywhere um i'm sure they make one for the mask that i use which is a which is a gold mantis it's a great mask um so i'm, I'm sure they have the gopro mount i just haven't invested in it just because i'm used to the um the head mount but since i'm letting my hair grow um the the gopro head mount was not really cooperating today i had to put the hood on over just to keep it in place so hopefully i've yet to review my footage but hopefully it all came out good because i'm kind of nervous there might be my my hair might be all inside of the shot, but we'll see. We'll see. Um Alva is good. Hi from Australia. What's going on, Evan? I know the best place. What's the store name for shoot 'em? I like the gill plate gill plate shots. Yeah, those are yeah, that's that's gonna be a pretty firm spot for you. Not if you stone them. I shoot them in the ankles. <laughs> What's up, Christopher? How's it going? Collar shots. Um, the best place is about two to three inches behind the eye and one inch up. That is about where the brain is. And the bigger the allure, the bigger the brain is. Well, that's it depends because if a big allure like that is within shooting range from you, his brain might might not be as big as the other the other one. So it just depends. It just depends, right? Um, where your point where you point your gun is muzzle awareness. Okay, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, um, I, I have issues with that. Like today, I was using a 120. And what pissed me off is that I, I wanted to use a 120 because I switched out the bands on it from the 916s to the 5.8s. Uh, which is funny because when I was loading it, I was like, bro, why is this taking so long for me to load? Um, I, I usually load my guns like on my stomach area. So... Um, yeah, I probably got a fat bruise from that, but, um, uh, today I had a big moon, like solid, maybe like one and a half pounds I was right in front of my face, but I was handcuffed by my gun because I was using the 120. If I had the 90 or if I had the, the, um, evolve spear in my hand, I probably would have shot him. But because the 120 was so big, I couldn't cut through the water fast enough, um, that I, I missed that shot. Where, um, let's see, what is the cheapest fins for beginners? Um, you don't necessarily want to get cheap fins. Um, I, I like the Cressies, the Cressy HFs, they're fairly cheap and they're gonna last you forever. Duck feet, a lot of people like a lot of beginners like to use, um, 
like to use bodyboarding fins, which which is definitely useful, and it, you can use it for bodyboarding and diving. But if you know you're going to be spearfishing, um, but you're younger, so you might grow into bigger fins. So it's up to you. Um, you can use you can use bodyboarding fins. I've seen a lot of people have success with that. But just remember, you're going to have an opening near your heel where you can step on Vana and you can get cut up and stuff. So keep that in mind. What's up, B Diaz? Thank you, man. If you found a four pound octopus, would you keep it? I didn't because I was targeting Uku and I didn't really need it. Um, so in that case, if I knew I was targeting Uku, um, what a lot of guys do is they take the taco, right? Once it's brain and stuff, you stick you stick it through the the end of your gun, kind of like as a um, as like a bait or like a lure to attract the Uku in. Uh, I've seen a lot of people have success with that. I've tried it a couple times and it worked for me. It did bring fish in. Um, so in that case, I probably would have took the four pond taco, um, stuck the head through the shaft and use that. Just kind of bob it up and down to kind of give the legs that motion. That's why you see guys at Target, those predators and stuff do this just because it kind of simulates that same motion. But it's even better if you have the actual taco. You know what I mean? <clears throat> How do you practice to hold your breath longer? Um, there's a lot of there's a lot of things that go into longer breath holds. Um, the best bet, honestly, is if you take you take a free diving course, um, then they'll teach you like the like the logistics of it, the mental aspect, all of that stuff, and they pretty much guarantee that you'll dive 60 feet. Um, but yeah, I know I know Kurt Chambers had one like when I first started diving, I was gonna take it. Cause he like guaranteed like a hundred feet, I think. But um, from what other friends have told me is that because he he has to do it within a certain amount of like a certain uh, certification standpoint, he can't push the, um, the beginner class to go that far. It's got to be in steps. Um, but he still hosts a really good class. If you want to look into that, um, Kurt Chambers. Hammerhead is good fins too. Yeah, you you'll find you'll find cheap, solid plastic fins. Hammerhead, Hatch, uh, any local brand. You can even go to just um, Westside Dive, and they'll fit you with some pretty cheap fins. What's up, Chucky? The pool or a bathtub or the ocean? Yeah, it's as long as, as the more you go diving, the better you're gonna get. You know, it's just you can't. You can't hold your breath for five minutes on land and expect to have the same results in the water, obviously. But you know that if you held your breath for a minute in the water, the last time you went diving and you went, you hold your breath for a minute and a half in the water, the second time you go, then that's actual progress that you can track. That makes sense. Um, I like the gill plate because it doesn't rip the meat. Has a bigger target and they bleed out. If I don't get good placement on the bigger ones, shaft is going to be bent. Guarantees. Guaranteed. Yeah, very true. Doesn't mess the meat up, but it will mess your shaft up. Shoot him in the tail. No worries, Christopher. Okay, I'm going to record another segment of the Spearfishing Tips video. Um, so... One second while I hide the chat. Um, you guys can you guys can just keep popping in questions and whatnot. What's going on? Blitz says he's back. One second. Right, very cool. So if you guys remember, I did a video earlier um, in the year. I think it was my first video of the new year where I talked about ways to be more consistent. I think my son's right here. Hold on one second. Thank <laughs> you. 
And we're back. Ba ba bang, ba ba boom. Sorry, my son was um, knocking on my door, trying to get my attention. So, you know what I mean. <clears throat> Muzzle awareness, like some people just point their gun at other divers. Big safety, no, no. Yeah, I never do that. I don't recommend you guys do that. Um, as well, definitely don't be pointing your gun or even a three prong at other people. Caleb says, do you think taking a three prong out to a fad on the east side of the island is a good idea? Probably not right now because it's so windy. Um, yeah, so probably not. If you're going to take a three prong out there, you're probably not going to land much at a fad unless you're shooting like Copello and stuff. But um, you might have a slip tip shaft. Yeah, I, I just wouldn't say it's a good idea right now. <laughs> I'm going diving in Kanye Bay tomorrow. I heard fish there isn't clean though. I don't know. I, I don't dive that side, so I wouldn't be able to tell you. Maybe somebody else in the chat uh, might have more experience. Um, how is it over there? I thought you can't dive Waikiki. I go to Magic Island sometimes. Um, You can on every other year. So I don't know if it's odd years or even years. I, I've only dove like Waikiki side twice ever. So I don't, I don't really remember. But... Uh, yeah, so it's every other year. This might be this might be, year, be a dive year. Not too sure. <clears throat> but yeah, so today when we went diving, the last time I went diving, I just went with my top half because I was just looking for taco. Ended up shooting a couple goats that I'm, I need to cook up actually soon. Um, but I was using my top half only, which means I still wanted to use a weight belt with my knife and my kui on top. So I took off probably like five or six pounds worth of weight. Um, and then when I went diving today with my full wet, wetsuit, I had to put all of the weight back. And I actually leave a couple extra weights inside of the back of my car. So I wasn't sure exactly what amount I had on top of my on top of my wetsuit and like what amount of weights I had on my wetsuit, my wetsuit before. So I wasn't sure exactly what the right amount was. Uh, I didn't want to be floating too much when I was diving or sinking that much um, while I was swimming. So I kind of just guesstimated. I left a two pound weight inside of the back of my trunk, which actually was supposed to go in the bottom of my dive flag. So during my whole dive, my flag was upside down, which is not ideal, especially when it's choppy. Um, and when there's a little bit of waves because you got your partner can't see you as well as if you had your flag up and just those kinds of things that I kind of I probably should have prepared a little bit more for um, that, you know, can mean losing somebody in a dive or not, you know, not being able to see somebody's flag. You guys separate one person swims in, doesn't know where the other person is, um, vice versa. So, yeah, that, that kind of stuff is important me having eight nine almost 10 years of diving experience already should know better than that but we all make little mistakes like that just because we try to rush or we just don't really take the time to prepare as we need um so spearfishing because it's so dangerous um you need to take as much precautions as you can um and also on the flip side of that taking as much precautions as you can also usually ends up with the more productive and successful dive in the first place. So Spinning Rock says it's every even year. I don't know about you guys, but I'm going Hilton tomorrow. And I did a, um, I just caught one big 7-Eleven crab while fishing in Waikoloa. I was fishing and it came up on the rock in shallow water. I was jigging. I grabbed it. As you would know, as you would, one Samoan crab and got my finger bust. Wow. I hope your finger's okay, man. Thinking about grabbing a kayak, do you have any anchors you'd recommend? I usually carry my buoy with a line and no anchor. Um, you can use 
your typical egglet as an anchor. Um, let me just see real quick. This is a bad example. But you would take a normal teardrop lead, like I use an eight ounce for my float. Um, you don't want to be using this. I mean, I guess you could use it, but the wire lead, this is for like slide baiting. But you can do that. As of right now, I don't recommend just using a line because your buoy can float away pretty fast, especially in current. Um, all it takes is you f is for you to let it go and just forget about it for 20 seconds, turn around, and it's 100 yards out. You know what I mean? So I'd recommend putting at least a weight like that on top. You can just tie it with monofilament to the metal clip of the end of your tag line. But um, they do sell dive anchor specific um, weights. So what it looks like, it's like a big, um, it's like a cylinder with just um, not not like full anchor points, but a little, little tiny anchor points that will lock in, but it won't get stuck. So that's what I would recommend. You can pick that up at Westside Dive. Hanapa'a probably has it. Um, as a new diver, it's hard for me to get comfortable spearfishing because the amount of blood in the water put me on edge and that makes me want to hurry and swim back after every fish I get. Um, that anxiety is normal for a beginner, you know, but the more you go diving and stuff, the more comfortable you'll get with spearfishing. Like for me, um, and probably for a lot of divers, sharks are, are an afterthought, you know, you don't really think about them. Of course, there's some sketchy situations where you're a little bit more wary of what's going on. Um, but the fish to avoid shooting that has a lot of blood are like Polani, Kala. Um, all those fish with the knives, they'll bleed a lot. And they will attract more of the uh, more of the tax collectors than, than other fish will. But, but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it too much. That's so why you got to be efficient when you're bringing the fish. You have to do it quickly. Get get your fish on the cooey and just continue diving. <clears throat> the longer the fish struggles, the more st stress signals or distress signals it's putting out in the water. If that makes sense. The blood, I wouldn't worry about too much as long as you dispatch the fish quickly. That's all it is. Just dispatch the, quick, the fish quickly <clears throat> and you should be good to go. I just bring them then swim back yeah you can stay out there and shoot more fish man hey uncle what's a good spot to go spearfishing I'm going with my dad tomorrow and we don't know any spots um well it depends depends on what island you live on and which part of the island you have to make sure check the surf report check what the winds look like um, check what the weather looks like there's a lot that goes into it but yeah Every crab has a way to safely pick it up. Yeah, it's those two back lakes. I'm with my friends in California. They all catch the Dungeness crab and those rock crabs. So they should they they showed me how to how to carry it properly. <laughs> bro, I'm so excited for the three prong. When is it coming in? Um, probably tomorrow, bro. I'm gonna send it out in the morning, so I might get to you in the afternoon or. If if not, then the next day for sure. All the way, I can now get action. <laughs> uh, Electric Beach is a good beginner spot. Go for trumpet fish, cornet fish. They're big and easy to catch. Yeah, and those fish are apparently very, very good to eat. Uh, my friend Taku says that they make like sushi out of it and like a, some specific meal. But he said in Japan there's like a very similar fish. It might be the same one. Um, but yeah, it's it's a really highly sought after fish for its meat. Um, so yeah, it's a good fish to target for beginners. Um, 
and I've heard like I've never dove Electric Beach, so not too sure. But that's what everybody tells me. It's a good beginner spot. <clears throat> Hearts of Park at Electrics right now because they close the park. I can confirm Cornet Fish is good. Yeah, parks just open. I think on Saturday, I believe. So um, today we actually went diving in a park. Um, so my buddy got there at right right around right after seven, like seven o two, seven o three. And the park was still closed. I got there at like 7.20ish. And he had parked at another spot already. And I told him the park was open. So he just turned around. We both ended up parking over there. What is a good spot to get taco on Oahu? Um, Pretty much every every beach with reef is going to have taco. Some, some beaches have more taco than less. But trust me. You probably swam over dozens in your life if you've ever been swimming over here over the reef. Um, so everywhere is pretty good. East side is like the infamous taco grounds. Um, but yeah, my recommendation is just to dive somewhere that you're familiar with and try to look for them there. Um, and then once you get the idea of how they look like and what to look for, then you can practice on different spots and then you'll be able to find your own grounds, you know. If you ever come Maui, you go fish. Yes, I am down. Maui will probably um, do be the the third place that I'll visit, third or fourth. Um, it's kind of in the air right now if I'm gonna go to Kauai first or or to the Big Island. Um, but most likely Kauai is gonna be gonna be first. But yeah, either Kauai, Big Island. Then Maui third. Unless I got the hookups for like Molokai or something, you know. Come Kauai, we go dive. Kauai first. <laughs> Big Island get action. Yeah, it just seems like Oahu is just overfish, which is which I'm not which I'm not over exaggerating. Blue water right off right offshore. Big Island get action. Yes sir. Uh, Good dive fin recommendations. I borrow friends or use my tiny fins for. Um, I have the Cressy HF 2000s. I think they changed the name of it, but that's a perfect fin. Um, even if you upgrade to carbon fiber fins, which you'll probably need to get foot pockets and stuff anyways, um, you'll always have the Cressy plastic fins that are good to go. And mine, for instance, my Cressy fins fit perfectly on my foot. I don't have to wear booties underneath. Um, I do have a pair of Omer. I think they're the the Stingrays or whatever, where it has the foot pockets with the screws. And I really don't like using those fins with the plastic on it. When I do upgrade to carbon fins, I'm going to use those as foot pockets, which means that I need to buy booties, and that just adds more stuff to my gear. So for now, I'm just satisfied with my Cressys. Although when I do go diving with my friends who have carbon fiber fins um i do struggle compared to them <laughs> big island we got you <laughs> i get house puna we go yeah, i'm down i am down i grab 7-eleven crabs horizontally along the back side that works too um get setma's best fin <clears throat> if I added some more spear fishing or fishing gear to my website, what what kind of fishing or spear fishing gear would you guys would you guys like to see to to the website? I'm not trying to be a full on fishing and spear fishing store. I just want to carry a select amount of products that are good for beginners and good for people that you know solid stuff, good for beginners and and just items that I really recommend. Everybody's saying wetsuits. My friends at Venture Wetsuits, I mean, you guys are probably all familiar with them. Um, it's pretty easy process of buying the, the suits from them, so I'm probably not going to sell wetsuits anytime soon. Um, and Tony's a good friend of mine, too, so that's why, I, um, what do you call it? I'm always put promoting his promoting his company because I use a wetsuit myself. I like it. I really enjoy it. 
And um, yeah, I've been friends with him for a while back in the Venture Hawaii days. Um, so yeah, I still have a lot of Venture Hawaii gear on me. <laughs> I got a Venture Hawaii, um, what is it called? What are those things called? Water pack. I don't even use it anymore, but it's in, it's in my closet. thought it was really cool when I bought it. Camelback. Is that what it's called? What are your top three eating fish? Um, I like goldfish. Probably top three eating. Um, let's see. Ahi. <laughs> ono. And... Nabeta. I like the cheetah print fish. Anybody know what it's called? Not sure. Everybody's saying wetsuits in here. Add a dive knife and a stringer. Um, I will be adding um, dive knives soon. Um, yeah. Mask. Fish bag. What kind of fish bag? Hooks and swivels. The nine foot three prong. Um, what's up, brother? Was wondering if you know anyone who has had cigarette poisoning off of Wahoo. Um, not personally, no. But on the other islands, I've known of a couple people. Beginner spear guns, maybe. That's a good one. I figured out after getting my fingers stomped and flying in. It's first, it's first they seen a 7-Eleven from Bland. Will the three prong come in tomorrow? I live in Kanye. Hey, that's why. Maybe. Maybe. Weight belt clips. That's a good one. Tuna clips. Yeah, so you guys... I, I know Ryan mentioned like crimps and stuff. Um, that sort of stuff. So, I'm probably looking at spears, obviously. Um, that's on the website now. But I'm going to add um, some... Custom dive knives with uh, it's gonna have a shaft extractor on top of it, um, and then probably move on to maybe some fishing gear from there. <clears throat> but I, I only want to carry maybe a dozen items for um, fishing and then a dozen items for spear fishing, nothing too much, nothing too big, just you know, just stuff that 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 you guys. I want to carry like exclusive stuff too. I mean, I know Evolve spears aren't exclusive, but I know it's it's a like really high quality spear. You know, it's good for beginners. Um, but as far as the other stuff, I want to get them get them like where you can't really find them anywhere else. So we'll see we'll see how easy that is to accomplish. But yeah. Did it affect him long term? Yes. Um, so the one guy that I knew on the Big Island um, was my grandpa's really good friend. And he got sick. He remembers specifically that he was throw, he used to throw net, yeah? So he got sick specifically. He remembers the exact fish that he got it from, and it was a manini. Um, I'm not saying manini has cigatera. All fish can and have probably a little bit of cigatera. Don't quote me on that, but... Cigatera is something that builds up in your body. Some fish have it more than others. Pre big predator fish like big luas and stuff um, will have cigatera buildup just because they're eating all the smaller reef fish that have a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Um, so, yeah. Um, I wouldn't worry about ugh, cigatera too much. You know, I know I know friends that eat fish. Every, I have friends that eat fish every day and it doesn't bother them, so... It's just kind of something you need, you got to accept um, if you're going to be catching fish here in Hawaii. Um, but yeah. Um, like the attachable and reachable weight belt weight that you attach to your float or float lines. 1.5 millimeter or 3 millimeter suit while water. Um, 3 millimeter is, is good just for year round diving. But 1.5 is is not a bad option either. They're always going to be cheaper than the 3 millimeter, or at least for the most part. Um, and you'll probably be a little bit more comfortable in the 1.5. Um, 
For me, sometimes I get a little hot in the three millimeter suits. It also depends on if you're using open cell or closed cell. Um, but if you're just starting out, I mean, 1.5 millimeter is is a pretty good option. You can always upgrade to a three millimeter later on, um, and, and then at that point you'll know that spear, you'll know if spear fishing is something you want to invest in. The caveat is also that a one point actually you can't really use a 1.5 or a three millimeter suit like on the west coast because the water is a little too cold um so yeah 1.5 would be a good option timothy said just sell one beginner package all the essentials well that's where i'm getting at that's where i'm getting at once once i get all the gear in place then i'll be able to do that sell packages but for now you know Everything can be separate. You should try kayak fishing. It's really fun. Um, yeah, I actually have a good kayak for kayak fishing. Um, how many of you guys would want to see a kayak fishing episode? Because I've done it a few times. I just I just never filmed it. Um, and most of the kayak fishing that I've done was before I even started the YouTube channel. Uh, but I never I didn't I never did go like blue water trolling for shebies and stuff. But yeah. I use 1.5 millimeter when I want to feel more flexible. You know, I live in Oahu. What's a good spot for taco and fish? Um, see, that's a that's a hard question, man. It depends on what side of the island you live and all that stuff. Sell float line. That's a good one. That's a good one. Go magnet fishing. Oh, let's see. This will be my second screenshot. Screenshot this whole chat. Go magnet fishing and metal detectors in the water. Good thought for future content. How do you how do you do magnet fishing? What what is that? Explain that to me. I just seen a um, D Almighty video where he was using a huge magnet for something. Maybe that's what you're talking about. Yeah, cigatera is everywhere in every salt body of water. It is as common in Florida as it is in the islands. Just was wondering if it was super common out there. Um, not 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 that common, I'd say, not super common. Right on, great minds think alike. <laughs> I would love a kayaking, kayaking fishing video. Diving off the kayak. I've done diving off the kayak in a video already. Kayak drift diving is the way how. <laughs> Down to see diving off a kayak vid. Yeah, that'd be a great, great one. Once once the water flattens out and we can find some days with some nice wind and I actually get all my all the kayak stuff ready, then we should be good. Good spot for Manini. Um I really target Manini a lot, but they're pretty much everywhere, you know. Yeah, you can find them everywhere. Do you ever think of buying a boat or do you already have one? Um, I've I've seen the work that goes into owning a boat. So um, probably not, <laughs> not going to want to invest in a boat until I can actually do work on a boat full time and get it ready and stuff. But man, yeah, so probably not not anytime soon. Maybe a jet ski in the, in the next two or three years. I think that that's the move. If I buy two seven foot three prongs from you, can I put them together and make it 14 feet? Um, you can't because you're going to have two tips and two tails that are part of the length. So you'll probably get it to like 11 or 12 feet. Um, but then you won't have the proper size bands for a 14 foot three prong. And it wouldn't be that effective either. <laughs> um, I also at. I also got to go bed. So can you please go over the hangout? Sorry for being selfish. This is the hangout. Um, as I mentioned in the last live stream, whenever I say put subscriber hangout, it's just for you guys to hang out in the chat chat. And then I'm just answering you guys questions and we're kind of just hanging out, you know, and that's, that's what the subscriber hangout means. Um, but we will be doing a meetup, which um, I'll put that in the description next time. If that's what I'm going over meetup. Um, will be 
in the summertime for sure on the weekend once all of this quarantine stuff is over. Do you have merch currently? Yes, I do on my um, on my website, visiondivehawaii.com. Broomfish is, is good, easy to shoot. Um, my goal on my bucket list is to catch a broomfish by hand. I've gotten pretty close, um, but yeah. Every time I get close, they just put on the turbo jets somehow. There's bridges all around Hawaii for dropping magnets and finding random metals, maybe guns, etc. But metal detecting in Waikiki could find jewelry, dentures, weird stuff, but it's good content. That's actually a good idea. Let's do a meetup. Yes, let's do a meetup. What was the first time you went diving? Secret location. Secret location. It was in Haleiwa though. I think broomfish is good to eat and so easy to shoot. I do too. What I don't like is um, is filleting them. That's very, it's very tough, literally. If I spear a 19 inch collar, will that break with a three prong? Um, I don't think so. I don't think it would. But um, don't take my word for it. The Dutch Angel Draggle, take a dive class, breathe up, breathe up essential, relax. Yep, it's as simple as that. Sashimi, the broomfish. Never tried that. I'm kind of scared to sashimi my catch. Um, I've gotten used to eating fish sashimi. Like, I don't know about you guys, but a lot of times when I shoot fish and I'm actually filleting it, filleting it, I always eat like a little piece of raw meat just, just to kind of see the different flavors. Um, but I wouldn't be too scared. Um, obviously, if you're catching fish in sketchy water, like catch fish in Pearl Harbor, <laughs> I know some people do, um, and they take it home, I would definitely wouldn't wouldn't um fillet, wouldn't need some sashimi out of that. But yeah, <laughs> we just got over 45 watching now. Let's go, the most we have had yet. Yeah, I know, it's sick. Thanks guys for tuning in. That's awesome. Welcome to the chat. If you're in the chat and you haven't commented yet, go ahead and chat something and shout you out. Sashimi the broomfish. I think we went over that. Does anyone eat hoggy? Um, I know Ace does. <laughs> it's a little inside joke we got here on the on the um, live stream. Do you have a P.O. box? Yes, I do. Zay the Beast. I saw a big eel today and I had thought edible with the Nagi sauce. Yes, fish are edible. I mean, um, eel are very edible here in Hawaii. Morning or sunset, always best time for... Have you ever been stuck under a shelf while diving? It was the most scariest thing, time of my life. Yeah, I've been, I've been stuck before. Not Nothing too bad, but yeah, that's when the panic starts to set in and it's never really a good time. I need to go diving for catching fish and giving them away. Good. It's a good it's a good thing to live by. My family thought broomfish wasn't edible, so we threw it away. Is it edible? Because it says it's not online. It is it is edible. As long as you know like it's the proper fish that we're to both talk we're all talking about here, it's edible. Sashimi trumpet fish is good, trust me. That's what my friend Taco told me. He said that trumpet fish is like really good. Oh, everyone is catching taco now. It's not winter yet. Might have to go. Yeah, today, I mean, I didn't really look for taco much today, but yeah, I didn't, I didn't see any in the holes that I did try to check, but we're kind of just booking it in and out to the second reef. My belt cooey got stuck before while under a rock. Had to cut them off. Um, did you try to bail out the buckle or did that not work? When's the next podcast? Um, I'm actually currently still doing the first one. Um, but yeah, I've been focusing more on the videos and the website and that sort of stuff and, and been doing a lot of live streams. So podcast has kind of been put on the back burner, but, um, after I publish tomorrow's video, I'm going to film another video in the morning, a gear review video. And then, um, yeah, and then I'll, I'll finish the podcast and then we'll probably do like a podcast every other week. I want to do it more where I can bring guests on. Like uh, my friend Taku, like guys like maybe Ryan Myers, Desmond Thane, 
um, Kevin Sakuda, Mike Hatcher. I want to get a lot of the spear fishing names that a lot of people are familiar with, as well as the fishing names, and um, do videos with them. Justin Lee, me, <laughs> Cannon. Um, brother Ace videos eating the homo. <laughs> um, how do you make it so that your buoy sits even in the water? You gotta, you gotta be able to weight it down somehow. Um, if you bought just a regular lifeguard plastic float, you gotta have like that attachment where you can put a weight underneath. Um, but yeah, you gotta have some kind of weight so it holds it. When I was stuck on the shelf, I knew I had to chill and go with the flow. Never felt so great to pop my head out of water. I can imagine. Never caught a taco before. I want to catch one and turn its head inside out. That's a great way to brain them. Just as Lee is one animal. Two pound. Eat everything if you're Filipino. That's pretty funny. I even had sea turtle and porcupine fish in the homeland. I've had probably the, the gnarliest thing I've ever eaten. It's not even that gnarly, but like the most weirdest meat I probably ate was squirrel. But I know that's not even, you know, it's not that big of a deal. How many of you guys watch meat meat eaters on on Netflix? That's one of my favorite shows on Netflix. I just I just finished watching um, Battlefish. If you guys watch that. But they made one season in 2018, and they haven't updated it since. So I don't know if that show is still going on. But the first season was pretty good. But I love Meat Eaters. Steve Rinella is, is awesome with his content. Um, and I watch, I watch his show to kind of get some ideas of how I can do my content on this channel. Um, but yeah. And he also inspired me to start hunting. I've never hunted in my life. Only hunted underwater. So, yeah. Maybe maybe towards the end of the year, we'll add, we'll add the hunting. Maybe, like, do a hunting episode, like, once every, once every six months. <laughs> That show is super good. Yeah, it is. But yeah, um, I don't listen to his podcasts. Um, I know he's got a media his podcast. I just can't. I just can't s listen to a podcast for two hours. I can listen to like twenty-five to forty-five minute podcasts, but anything over that is just a little bit too much for me. You only need like ten pounds in your belt to help with the initial drop. Once you dive deep, the water pressure makes you sink. That's true. All right, Blitz. See you later, bro. So, yeah, guys. I'm going to hang out for about five more minutes. Uh, and, yeah. We'll be doing a live stream every Tuesday, I believe. I have another episode coming out tomorrow. It's a fishing one. And then the episode after that is probably going to be a spearfishing gear review video uh, that you guys will find pretty interesting depending on whether you need something like this or not and then i'll have a spearfishing vlog out next week tuesday or next week wednesday probably because we're doing the live stream on tuesday um we'll see we'll see how the tuesday kind of plays along because i do like publishing videos on tuesdays so if i publish a video the day after it kind of messes up my scheduling my my posting schedule so We'll just have to t see how Tuesday works, but I'm just here because a lot of you guys had said Tuesday is a good day to do it. Um, but yeah. So we got five more minutes. If anybody wants to shoot in some last minute questions, I'm going to head off. Um, if you guys are interested in buying an Evolve Spear, the flash sale is going on until Friday. I have about a half a dozen spears left, maybe less than that. I sold... Um, a bunch yesterday and today so if you guys want to um if you guys want to pick up a spear make sure you do it by friday to get the sale um if not then you're just gonna have to um, wait until i get more in stock and it's not gonna be on sale but i'll do some more promos with the evolve spears um that uh, will make it 
a um, little bit more of a package deal for you guys. But yeah. Um, how much for the spear? Um, go check out the website, fishanddivehawaii.com, and it'll be on there. Are you going to ship it tonight? Well, the post office is not open right now, so <laughs> probably tomorrow. No almas yet, bro, Timothy says. Wait a few more weeks, probably. Yeah, summertime is when all the smaller bait fish start coming in. It's my favorite time of year to go fishing. Love it. Jay Gaming says $104.99. Yes, that is for the 7 foot. 8 foot is $109.99. Yeah, I, I didn't know the prices off the top of my head. So thanks for posting the 7 foot price. I'm pretty sure the 8 foot is $5 more. I forget what I set them at. But the flash sale is $10 off. So um, yeah, um, that's a, probably the... I'm probably not going to do the flash sale for a while um, after this Friday. So yeah. I'm also going to start adding um, adding some accessories to the spears, like the neural tips, um, as well as maybe maybe also putting out the higher end evolved spears, which are the CT transformers. Um, but we'll just see how the rest of the evolved speeds go. So yeah. I fish walmas with little poles. Is that what you mean? <clears throat> Ain't nobody tried to spear fish walmas that'll blow them up. <laughs> fish walmas with little poles, is that what you mean? Do you have any good tips for kids to, to spear fish? Um, it depends on how old they are, you know. Just gotta just gotta get used to the kids being in the water. First they gotta be able to swim, then they gotta be comfortable with the mask, snorkel, and fins on. They gotta be comfortable actually swimming around, you know. So yeah. Yes, last min last minute question, Justin. If I wear a Ninja Turtle Halloween outfit, do you think it will fool Uhus into letting me get close? I'm not sure, but you can try, and you can let me know how that goes, and then I'll interview you, and we can talk about it. Do you know any good charter boat guys on Oahu, like for fishing, Mitchell? Uh, for fishing. Is it okay if my gear is cheap? Yeah, I start. Uh, I started out with Walmart mask and fins, the U.S. diver ones. I think they're like 20, 30 bucks for the set. I started with that for a while, for like three months when I was diving. I had, I was using a surf wetsuit, just the top that my uncle gave me, um, and yeah, I was just. It's okay. You can start with what you got. Obviously, don't push yourself with gear that can't handle it. But um, yeah. I'm 12 and I'm starting to spear fish, but I've been diving my whole life. Um, meaning like, like free diving, snorkeling, that kind of stuff. Yeah, sport fishing. Um, yeah, I do know actually the Kuulo Kai, out in Haleiwa. If you watch my fishing video, um, just look for the one with the ahi and the mahi mahi and the thumbnail. So those two videos were were filmed in one day and we caught so much fish and that was actually um on a charter boat but my friend works on that charter boat i don't know if he still does but his dad is one of the, the guys that runs it so um yeah so cool little kai if not you can dm me on instagram and i can kind of give you some more information on that but they they kill fish for sure diving with my family what would you rather eat uku or mu um probably mu dive safe everyone shoots shoots see you later bro wanna call her kumu kumu all right a couple more minutes and then i'm gonna head out and spend some time with my family it's almost bedtime for us Let's actually do a little, I'm going to play some music and you guys let me know if I should use it in my next diving video.
You guys want to see where I get my music from? Have you ever been to Kauai? Not yet. Yeah, so that's where I get my music from, Epidemic Sounds. Um, you should come to Kauai and get on some prime spots. I'm down, bro. The Rife Marauder, Marauder is Chere. Um, I gotta look into that. I might, I might be picking up a wood gun in the near future. We'll see. We'll see. I don't know what size I'm gonna get. Probably like a 110 because I got, I got a 90 now. I have a 90 pipe. The Crest or the not the Crest, but the Pathos Open Pro. Um, then I got the I have a custom 120, which is the one at the orange band you guys see right here. Um, so maybe like a 110 or a 105 that might be in the move. Any gun recommendations? Top 110. <laughs> Probably dive same areas. I know a bunch right offshore. Nice. Aim right King Venom. You know, my friend I went diving with today just told me about, uh, told me he's going to get one. Is that the one with the cuttlefish barrel? <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Mines are far out and get choke fish. I don't mind diving diving far out. I dive pretty far out, bro. I like them curves. What? Oh, yep, yep. You guys, you guys want to see this spear gun right here? I can show you guys a spear gun that my head out. Music sounds great, Evan says. Thanks. Here, one second. Let me grab it. I know I know a bunch of Luau House. I'm a Luau House, probably. This is a cuttlefish part right here. You can see it comes out. It's got an Andes reel on top. It's a pathos. And then we've got a, what kind of shop is this? Rob Allen. So yeah, pretty cool. The only thing I don't like is this line right here. I'm gonna switch this out for some mono filament instead of this like, whatever this material is. But pretty sick gun. Is that all carbon? Yes. The whole barrel. It's a custom barrel from Turkey, I think. I know houses, but usually nobody home. 
Same, bro. Same. All right. So I think that's about it for the live stream. I'll be back live next week, Tuesday. Very similar episode to this one where I'm going to do like a little mini episode inside of it. Record it and then, yeah, we'll just do a subscriber hangout, that sort of stuff. I might be integrating some more things in it. But, yeah, as you guys know, the live streams are getting better, you know. If you guys were here when I first started doing them not too long ago, then you know we had a lot of technical issues. So we've kind of worked some of that out. But, um, yeah, it was nice hanging out with you guys. You guys all stay safe. Um, I know the beach parks have been opening up, but make sure to still follow whatever the government's, you know, kind of advising. But um, like a lot of you guys would agree, you shouldn't let the government tell you to do everything, you know. Uh, so, yeah. See you later, Timothy. See you later, e Evan. J Gaming. Tun Tun L. Um, posted in here, Canon. See you later, man. Have a good one. Travis. Um, thanks for hanging out. Um, thanks, man. Yep, see you later, Tim. And yeah, I'm going to hella on out. Chison. James. J Gaming. Aloha, guys. Have a good one.